Okay. Go. <laughs> this is uh, uh, Pelican. It's the Pelican um, Italic Broad. And I'm going to put it in this. Uh, this is my usual tester pen. And I'm, I'm not going to actually fill it. I'm just going to dip it to see how it writes. And uh, it's a little skippy, but that sometimes happens right out of the box. But let's take a look and see how well balanced it is. I'm going to rinse it over here. Get the green ink out of it. So I'm going to put it up like this and take a look at that. Oh my, yeah, it is uh, one. One time is actually ahead of the other. I don't know if you can see that there, but here we go. Is it coming into focus? Okay, yeah, you can see. Can you see? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let me balance it first before I do it really has to be balanced before it's cut. Um and the idea here is to turn this nib into a cursive italic of our own variety um, that has a little more crispness than what they're after. And a little more definition and less skippy. Okay, there we're pretty well balanced looking at both sides. Now we'll take it over to the diamond wheel. Now it gets a little noisy here and a little wet. So we add water to the diamond wheel and air to carry everything away. We've got a vacuum on it. So I'm going to start cutting. I'll start a top cut and then I can really see if it's balanced. Yeah, it is. If it weren't, one side would cut ahead of the other. So it's just a matter of taking it down a bit. Now this may take a little while to get right. So you'll have to be patient with me. That's starting to look pretty good on top. This is the rough cut. And what I'm after is a very even, uniform surface across the top. Okay, we're there. Underside. There's a lot of material that I can take away to get down to a narrower cross section, a narrower profile. We're getting close. There we go. Oh yeah. So that's the top and bottom shape. And the next thing is to, this is as much uh, aesthetic as anything, but I like to put a bevel cut in all four sides, just a light, just a light bevel cut, and then um, the top back cut and a shaping cut on the corners, and then the critical cut, the writing surface. So here we've actually already got the shape pretty well formed. Uh, I want to get a little further under here. That's good. And a little bit off of the corners because we don't want to catch it. Now I'm going to go to the next level of wheel. That was a diamond wheel and this is a little bit less aggressive and a lot smoother. I've got a fresh wheel on here so it's really cutting pretty well. Uh, also still with the water. So basically I'm duplicating what I did on top and um, refining what I did with uh, bevel cuts now. The top cut was like that to give good polish and that's entirely aesthetic on top. Uh, and then the bottom cut. Takes a bit to take out the uh, hard marks of the diamond wheel because they're pretty coarse. It was a very coarse wheel that cut that. Okay, we're getting close. Actually, I want to do a little bit of the top back cut trim. 
now the critical cut. That's starting to look pretty good. We've got shape and we're beginning to get surface. Okay, next level. Now I can turn off the water, turn off that sound, and we're going to go to the pasta. Uh, this is the final polish, and our, I'm charging up a new buff here. So it's basically the same thing. Again, I'm cutting the top. It's not really cutting as much as it is polishing. And there's that bevel, and there's a bevel, and here's the back cut. Now, um, the underside cut. And you can see where it's green is where the most of the strength of the uh, polish is. This is cutting fast because it's fresh and new. There we go. And that little bevel there. So we had the back, yes. Now for the critical cut here. This is the one, this is the writing surface and it's everything. This is what it's all about. And in here, taking down the corners a little bit. I've got these grooves that are good for that. Okay. We can shut this noisy stuff down. And I'm going to need to take the, over here I'm going to take out the, I'm going to floss the nib basically. Clean out the uh, stuff that's in between. and any burrs that were formed in there when the cut was made because it does, especially that first cut, rolls the edge in a little bit. Now I've done both sides, cleared it out. So let's see how we, what we've got here. A little more cleaning with a paper towel. And okay, a little inspection. Okay, I need to come back here a little bit. Sorry, but uh, this is requiring a little more underneath. On that writing surface. And that probably is going to get it right in there. The low angle is what I saw a problem with. taking a little longer than I had hoped, but this is not unusual at all. Okay. Another inspection. Oh yeah. We really want a rounded shape, slightly rounded shape, pretty flat, but rounded. That's sort of a contradiction, isn't it? And then we want, um, the inner margin has to be rounded, but just slightly, because if it's too rounded, it's skippy. If it's not rounded enough, it's scratchy. So we got to find the right spot in between. So let's see what we got here. That's saying pretty good so far. See how, the, see how thin that cross stroke is? And the downstroke is a little heavier. I like the word Egypt because it's got lots of descenders. Now for my taste, I would have a little more ink here. I want a little more juice out of this nib, so I'm going to open it up just a touch. There we go. That's the juice. Now it is position sensitive. You can see I can make it skip if I get back on the edge, but if I rotate it into the line just right, it won't skip. So that's why we always warn people about these cursive italic nibs. And that's what this is called, the cursive italic. It has to be uh, put, on, put down on the paper so that it has the right kind of 
print to it. <laughs> Thank you.